will come to pass. Amen. John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. Wow. Don't we have a faithful God? Yeah. Uh, don't, don't trust in me. Trust in the one who lives in me. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, uh, the key word in the book of Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes 1, is vanity. And uh, it's, it talk, the vanity is a, a futile emptiness of, of trying to be happy apart from God. That's what vanity is, trying to be happy apart be, happy apart from God. And Solomon, who's the preacher here in the book of Ecclesiastes, he he, he declares that from the human perspective, his, everything in life is empty. Power, popularity, prestige, pleasure, nothing can fill the God-shaped void in man's life but God himself. Whoever you are this morning, within you, within me, there's a God spot that, the only, that will never be satisfied in life by anything other than the person, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We need to see and understand, Solomon goes on to declare that, but once we've seen God and we see from God's perspective, he says in Ecclesiastes that life takes on a totally different meaning and life begins to uh, take on the, the sense of eat, drink, rejoice, do good, live joyfully, and fear God. Hallelujah. You know, we need to see and understand that God's ways are higher than our ways. We need to see and understand if we trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways. Trust Him. Acknowledge Him. He will guide and direct our paths. Who are you trusting in today? I tell you, you can trust in no one better than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the one who brings life and gives His life in a abundance. Uh, Gosha is heading back to Poland tomorrow night, and uh, she came expecting to get work. There was no work, but I believe out of you being here for the last two weeks, Gosha, the Lord would say, my daughter, do not despise the weeks that have passed, because in these weeks I have spoken into your heart, and your heart is a heart that is pliable in my hands, and I will take you, my daughter, and I will cause you to live upon the heights of the mountains and not in the valleys. I will cause your purse never to be empty, and I will take you through your exams, and I will take you through your college, and I will cause you to be the head and not the tail. Know, my daughter, that I, your God, your Lord, your Savior, your friend, your master, your King of kings, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you, and I will follow you and walk with you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. We need to see and understand that God is talking to us, and each and every one of us. Last Sunday, Mark spoke on forgiveness, and he talked about, you know, forgiveness. This week, has anybody been watching? the um, sports that have been on this week. You know, I've watched those guys. You know, so, some of us, they definitely weren't wearing shoes like that. They were purple and gold, the ones I saw the guy wearing. Hallelujah. I watched those men and those women this week run with such fleet-footedness. That's probably not good English, but anyhow, they ran fast. I looked at these old walking boots and I thought, yeah, they didn't run in these, but some of you today are walking, are running in boots like these rather than in having your feet shod with the gospel of peace. You're running with carrying a burden, and the burden you're carrying, some of you today are carrying to the shame of your past, and it's dragging you down and dragging you round. You cannot get round the circuit that God is calling you to run. You cannot run the race that he has set before you, because your feet are not shod with the gospel of peace, but your feet are shod with shame. Jesus Christ came to take your shame, to take your pain, and to take your sorrow. This month we're looking at the word freedom and how that Jesus Christ came and set you and I free. And in, in Romans chapter 12 it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, a living sacrifice. I watched some of the contestants during the past week and uh, they ran and when they had finished, they pointed heaven word, they got on their knees and they gave God praise and thanks for all that he had done for them. You and I need to be men and women who are running this race that God has set before us that we read about in Hebrews chapter 12 in the first two verses. And it says, run with perseverance the race that is set before you, casting aside all those things that so easily entangle us. Now here's the challenge to you this morning. What is it is entangling in your life? <laughs> 
What is it that causes you to trip up? What is it that is causing you not to live the life that you see others living and you so desire? We need to see and understand that those, when Paul called us to run that race with perseverance, he said, and we need to see that some of us are carrying burdens of shame. Some of us are carrying burdens of fear. We're afraid of what someone might find out about us. Listen, your past doesn't matter a tittle. What does matter is your future. Your past has already been dealt with in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to see and understand. Some of us, though, are running around instead of having, you know those little singlet vests you see? Man, did you see that guy Mo Farah run that 10,000 meters? He was wearing the skimpiest shorts and he was wearing the tiniest shirt and he was nothing was going to hold him back. But some of you desire to run this race of God, but on your back, you're carrying guilt. And you're running this race of God, and you've got shoes that are made full of shame, and they're like lead weights on your feet. You're carrying a backpack of guilt upon your back, and your life is filled with fear of what someone might find out about you. My brothers and sisters, Jesus knows everything about you, and he loves you with an everlasting love, and that's worth an amen. Hallelujah. We need to see and understand that some of us are this race that he's called us to run. We're running this race and we're full of anger. Listen, anger is what increases you and t- separates you from God. And some of us are living lives full of such anger that the backpack which we carry on our back, which is full of anger, full of guilt, and full of fear, it becomes such a part of us that we just get used to it. And we get used to it, and we get used to it, and we get used to it. But God says, give me your anger. Give me your shame. Give me your fear, because I've come to set you free that you might have life and that you might have life in might have life in abundance and we need to see and understand that as like Mark shared last Sunday it was because I was reading I was listening to his message during the week that's where I got stirred up about this was about unforgiveness and unforgiveness is something many of us carry around I want to say to you friends it says in the race of faith in Hebrews 12 therefore we also plural not not you we who's running the race with you God is. Jesus is. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. This morning, I want to encourage you to take the burden off your back, out of your mind, and leave it at the foot of the cross. So many come to know and love Jesus, and you give them your burdens and you give him your backpack of guilt and shame, you give him your backpack of anger and frustration and unforgiveness, but then you feel something's missing. Yes, all that heaviness is missing, but because it's missing, you go back and you want to pick it straight up again because it has become your friend. Friend, I want to say to you this morning, shame, anger, guilt, fear, and uh, unforgiveness are not your friend. Shame is not your friend. Unforgiveness is not your friend. Fear is not your friend. Guilt is not your friend. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is. He is the greatest friend you will ever come to know. He is the one who says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And he says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Man, when I watched Mo the other night running 10,000 meters, I thought he was going to get beaten on that because he came off that last bend. How that man got energy to run 10,000 meters at that speed, I do not know. And it says, but you and I can run with endurance the race that God has set before us because it says, looking unto Jesus. If If we're going to run the race that God has set before us, we can only do it by looking unto Jesus. Don't look unto businesses. Don't look unto finances. Don't look unto your neighbor. Don't look unto your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. Look unto Jesus. Cast your burden upon him because he cares for you. And on this month, as we look at freedom, there's that song, freedom. In this place, there is freedom. Freedom Freedom reigns in this place. That's what it is, yeah. Freedom reigns in my heart. Yes. Amen. Is freedom reigning in your heart? Yes. 
Because brothers and sisters, you need to know the freedom of God living and reigning in you that you might run this race not being shackled by a heavy burden or being running with boots full of shame or by carrying a backpack of guilt and a back pack of anger and unforgiveness, but that you and I would look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, that's you and I, we were the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we could go over into Ephesians and see that we're seated with God in heavenly places. As I watched during the week and I watched the I, I was amazed at the high jump when they were clearing over 2.2 meters and so many centimeters. How the heck can you jump six foot six or six foot seven and they just run up to it and they up and over? I watched them with that pole vault and they were clearing five meters on a and a guy or a woman dangling on the end of a pole. I would certainly snap it if I was on it. Hallelujah. You know? But it pushes them up and over. I looked at those men and women running those races, and I don't know what you saw last night, but wow, did those four young English men run the four by 100 meters in the third fastest time ever recorded to win the gold medal. But they have trained and trained and trained. They have run and run and run. I want to say to you this morning, you cannot run with Jesus by visiting him occasionally. They need to be like those athletes. You need to be in daily training, communing with God, reading His Word, being led by His Holy Spirit, and following after His leading, setting aside all those things that so easily entangle us. In Romans chapter 12, when, when uh, we're called, Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Those people who were running this last week at those world championships sacrificed everything. What are you holding back from God? Don't answer it all at once. You see, we can say, but I've sacrificed this and I've sacrificed the other. He's not interested in just your little sacrifice. He's calling upon you and me to give him our lives that he might take our lives and do exceedingly abundantly more with them than we can ask, think, or imagine in Jesus' name. Like it says in Proverbs 11 and verse 1, cast your bread upon the water and see it return. When I had John come to church a few weeks ago and you give someone a prophecy 20 years ago, it's quite amazing. Two days after John gave me that word, I got an email from my son Steve and sent to him by a young lady who's Chinese, was in Manchester 10 or 12 years ago. And apparently I gave her a word that she would travel to the nations of the world. And she wrote to Steve and says, can you let your dad know the prophetic word that he gave me is coming to pass? Because I've been in South America, I've been in China, I've been in, she has been literally all over the world working for God. But another part of the prophecy was this. I said, I see you with a red case and you're praying for someone on a plane. And apparently she was flying to South America and she got up to give a prophetic word to somebody on a plane, a total stranger. And as she was giving them the prophetic word, as she turned around, guess what was sitting on the floor? A red case. Now you can say coincidence. I don't care whether you say coincidence or not. But I know that the word given, the word received in faith came to pass. Cast your bread upon the waters. I love the prophetic. That's why I'm so excited about the Thursday nights. I encourage you, be here Thursday the 24th and any other Thursday night we do it. Because God is going to minister life into your life and give you a purpose and a vision for tomorrow. But if you're going to run with the vision that God has given you, I knew at the age of 11 I was going to be a pastor. I didn't become a pastor at the age of 11. It was another 12 years later, 13 years later, before I started even in church leadership. But I knew there was a day coming when I was going to serve God. And I, young people, I say to you this morning, God's got a purpose and a plan for your life. When I was with Stephen and Owen, Owen's my son-in-law, Stephen's my son, and we were together during the week, and they've got churches. So there we were as three pastors talking during the week. Suddenly I said, Lord, I got this incredible sense of, I'm coming to the end, and they're just beginning. It's an amazing feeling, so it was. A sense of, I'm coming to the end of what God had called me to do. Forty years I've been in leadership within the life of the church, 
And here are they starting out on their adventure. And I'm thinking, wow, God. You know, but I praise God that as I've sown willingly over the years and sown a lot of stuff, whether it be life, time, finances, whatever it might be, it's always come back to us. As we have cast our bread upon the water, it has returned to us. Barb and I lack no good thing. People say this, how is it you and Barb travel the world, have holidays, and you live well. Because we, over 40 years, and from the day we first met, and that's more than 40 years now, probably. Well, that was not telling me anything. But anyway, ever since we met, and even before we met, we were tithing, we were giving, and we were giving of our lives unto God. And God is faithful to His Word. And I want to encourage you this morning to walk in the freedom that Christ has purchased for you. Live not in the vanity of the world, the world that Ecclesiastes talks about. Because vanity of vanities, all is vanity. You need to know Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You need to make sure this morning that your life is not shod with shoes of shame, but your feet are shod with the gospel of peace. That about your girth is the belt of truth. That the breastplate of righteousness you walk in on a daily basis. That you hold up the shield of faith and you fight with the sword of the word of God. And you wear that helmet which protects your mind, which is God's word. That you are men and women who your feet are shod with the gospel of peace. Oh, how I pray that in every day I'm in, I'm in the radio station again tomorrow. I've got to do extra programs with going to Zambia. And I've got to record extras. But you know, it's a amazing as I've prayed over the people in there. You may never listen to me, but I tell you what, there are more non-Christians living to me, listening to me on a Sunday morning than there are Christians. Hallelujah. And that's casting my bread upon the water. Where is God asking you to cast your bread? Where is he calling you to cast the blessings of your life that they might return unto you in years to come? People say, oh, well, I can't afford to do that. I can't afford to give that up or do that. My friend, you can't afford not to if if it's what God has called you to do. Because the God I've come to know and love and treasure is a God who's faithful in every way in his life. He's promised, he said to Barbara and I, we would have houses all over the world. There would always be a pillow for us to rest our head upon. We would own homes in different nations. We have homes all over the world. May not own them personally, but we're welcome. There's rooms in there for the, when we arrive. It's amazing. Today, God wants you to walk in the freedom that Jesus purchased for you and run with perseverance the race that he set before you. Not looking unto others, but looking only unto Jesus. Not being men and women who get caught up in the vanities of the world, but men and women who fill that God spot with Jesus and Jesus alone. Today, I want to encourage you, run with perseverance the race that is set before you. Wow. If you saw the sprinter, Usain Bolt, last night, Man, my heart went out to that guy. He's got cramp or something in there. Or something went in his leg, a muscle or something. And he collapsed on the, in the 60 yards up the last 100 yards or meters he had to run. The end of a lifetime for him. But man, you look back into his life. They're not going to remember him breaking down in that last race for long. They're going to remember the 20, 19 gold medals and the one silver that he won. How he influenced the world. I want to be a world changer in Jesus' name. And I'm calling you and this little community of Rougely to be world changers in Jesus' name. I'm calling you to be men and women who will change your community, your street, your time. And it comes through prayer and you willing to give God everything you've got. And he will never fail you, nor will he forsake you. Take off the heavy burdens this morning. Leave them at the cross. Shame dealt with. Anger can be dealt with. Unforgiveness, that's a killer. It is. Don't laugh at me, anybody. Unforgiveness kills. Eats away at the inside of you. Doesn't it? It does. Have you ever been there? I've been there. Yeah, I've sat at home thinking about about somebody else and they're having a good time. Hallelujah. So in the end, I've had to learn to cast it all onto Jesus because he is the author and he is the finisher of the race that he's called me to run. 
I'm casting my bread upon the waters of Christ Jesus. And we will see them return in years that lie ahead. Cast your burden unto Jesus this morning. He cares for you. Live in freedom. Oh, I can't sing that song. I don't well, well enough. Freedom. freedom reigns in this place. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this morning that freedom reigns in this house. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray for every individual in, that can hear me this morning. That Father God, if they're wearing sh boots of shame, that Lord, they would take their foot on their feet out of those boots and put on the gospel of peace. They would leave the shame behind. Where they're feeling guilt, they would leave guilt at the cross and know your joy. Where they're, Father God, feeling the burdens of the world, I pray that they'll just release them to you. And that, Father God, you would pour out your blessing upon them and fill their hearts to overflowing with your love, your joy, and your peace. Freedom. Freedom reigns in this place. And God, to you be all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Don't let the world tie you up, friends. The world would love to tie you up. Freedom. You know, I lay in bed this morning. I wish I could be Howard. Retired. Life of luxury. Getting up every morning when he wants to, you know, without Kate nagging him. I could just see it, Howard. You know, yeah, yeah. I lay in bed this morning there and I thought, wow, I could lie here this morning. Have you ever felt that, you know? Don't say it so emphatically, Liz. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, they, uh, but there are times in life when you just want to relax and just let go. I want to encourage you, let go and let God have his way in your life. And I and my life will do the same. That whatever days I've left in ministry, and I trust it's many, many years, wherever I go in the world, I'll bring words of life, words of hope, words of peace, words of joy, words that build up and don't tear down, that the bread I cast upon the water shall return unto me manyfold, as it will with you, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. That's Faye. Can we do a song? That's the right answer, Faye. Hallelujah. And if you're short a musician, Paul will play it on his harmonica for us. It'll be all right. Hallelujah. Ah. Great, great to hear harmonica this morning, Paul. I really enjoyed that. Amen. Yeah, keep telling you, keep sucking and not blowing. You'll be all right. Amen. Hallelujah. You make a note of that, yeah. Yeah, make sure you teach him that this week, Gay. All right, keep, him, keep the lessons going, love. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's stand together. Hallelujah.